And welcome today to the Results Rules OK podcast. And today joining me, a colleague, good friend of mine from the UK, uh, Mr. Dan Short. Dan, welcome. Welcome to the call. Hi, David. Yep, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Now, because it's the uh, middle of March, we're not allowed to talk about Brexit. You know that, don't you? Yes, I, I promise you I won't. Yeah, tempting as it may be, we're not going to talk about Brexit. <laughs> um, anyway, so Dan, thank you for coming on the call. Uh, Dan, you and I, we've known each other for, for quite some time. I know you as a, an entrepreneur, a business leader, and one of the top guys in recruitment in your sector. Um, but for those people who maybe don't know you, um, there may be some people out there that don't know you too well just yet. Mm -hmm. um, tell us, who, who's Dan Short? Tell us a bit about yourself. Okay, um, so I am father of twins mm -hmm. uh, and they came along in the same year that we set the business up so that mm -hmm. was interesting <laughs> um I, I i like to consider myself a, a family man uh i, I have a, a very good relationship with uh, with my twin girls so we we try and spend as much time as we can together uh, especially on the weekends um because the first few years of setting the business up in particular were uh fairly full on uh so yeah i didn't really get a chance to spend too much time with them in that first uh, year or two yeah. um yeah i'm an avid supporter of liverpool football club so oh um well no, nobody's perfect me. yes you're speaking to me today <laughs> after we uh beat by munich so that is again uh it's a really exciting time yeah uh, so that's good and uh so yeah my day job is co-founder and uh, Managing Director at Greenacre Recruitment. Uh -huh. And uh, I'm a, a co-opted board member uh, for the Chartered Institute of Housing on their London Regional Board as well. Excellent, that keeps you, uh, keeps you out of mischief. Yes, absolutely, <laughs> yeah. So, so you, I know you say you, you've founded or you're co-founded Greenacre at the same time and you're having your, your, your twin daughters uh as well what so why why did you create greenacre where did the idea come from where was the inspiration to uh, sort of go it alone if you like it was with um if i i'll, I'll start back to where my career began really because yeah. i uh came out of university from leeds uh knew i wanted to work in recruitment that was yeah. always the uh the goal mm -hmm. um i was really fortunate that I think it was actually about the eighth or ninth job that I applied for <laughs> happened to be in Cambridge with a, a certain Mr. Chris Purdy, um, oh. Who, oh, uh, <laughs> who you know very well. In a good um, way. Indeed, indeed. So uh, Chris uh, and I worked together uh, in Cambridge for you know, a good couple of years uh, and, and my introduction to recruitment was housing. Um, so I spent about uh, seven years recruiting housing and asset professionals in the east of England. Mm -hmm. uh, Chris uh, left uh, the business uh, and set up a shop in Luxembourg. Mm -hmm. um, now, once he did that, it was almost like, uh, uh, you know, the light bulb moment. And we got on really well. We had a, a good dynamic, Chris and I, and he started floating the idea to me. Uh, they were doing exceptionally well in in Luxembourg, and you know they they had an ambition to to set up shop in in the UK, and they were asking if I'd like to do it. Mm -hmm. um, and at the time, you know, I I was married, but I didn't have any other commitments other than that. Mm -hmm. um, and I think professionally, I felt that you know Joe and I, uh, my my business partner now, we we started to build quite a solid partnership. Um, we built a really strong network in the in the industry and between us we're very very different but we had quite a good combination between us because we we complemented each other we challenged each other sure. uh, and, and as a, as a two as a twosome it actually worked quite well so we we just felt you know what if there's a time in in our lives where we we can take a risk uh this is it uh so yeah the, 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 that was the inspiration it was chris uh, sort of planting the seed and then as soon as we did it um, you know we housing was all we knew and we loved working in the sector because housing is one of these industries that actually not many people know about unless they've either been affected by it or have someone who's working in the sector mm -hmm. yeah 
Um, but when you're in it and you become, you know, familiar and you, you, you get hooked, it's such a varied industry. There's so many, so much variety and, and it gives people a chance to develop a really meaningful career. Mm -hmm. uh, John and I just got, got hooked and, um, yeah, so we, we're still operating in the housing sector 14 years uh, down the line. My um, so that, that was really why we created it, the right time yeah. professional. Loved the sex we were in, and we were given given a golden opportunity. Yeah, and I guess you know, a lot of people they get in their career, whether it's in recruitment or or otherwise, they get to some stage in their career. I, I did it myself. Um, I've got a few more grey hairs than you, so I'm a little bit ahead of the curve. But I like that. Yeah, <laughs> you get to the point in your career where you start to think, you know, you love what you do, you like the the, the market, the clients, the people, but you want to have more sort of control, authority, and independence. The, one of the things I think mm. that stops people doing that can be the, the the fear or the concern or the anxiety or the perceived risk and this sort of thing. Just out of interest, because mm. I guess you know, people listening to this conversation, you, you made the leap from being you know, very successful in the job you were doing with another organization. Mm. And, uh, and, and joking aside, we know Chris over in Luxembourg, very reliable, trustworthy, capable guy working with Courtney. So the risks were sort of reduced to an extent, I guess, because we know, like, know and trust yeah. them. But how did you, you know, how did you reconcile the, the conversation with your wife, for example, or how did you overcome the, the fear or the risk? What was going through your mind before you jumped ship? If I'm really honest, I think it was absolute naivety <laughs> to the, the complexity of what we were getting into. Yes. Um, we, the the dis decision making process was we're quite effective at this. We know the market. We've got a strong network. Mm -hmm. We get on as a, as, a, as a duo. We could probably make this work. Yeah. Um, but we didn't know what we didn't know. So I'd never run a payroll before. I'd never, uh, I'd managed a PL. I hadn't created a PL. Mm -hmm. I, ha I hadn't really hired on the scale that we were about to. And I certainly wasn't as concerned with hiring the right people for, for my own business. So I think there was an element of naivety going into it. Yeah. Um, but as I said before, I, th I think it was just a case of, it was all so exciting yeah. and I'd seen Chris and Courtney speak so passionately about creating something that was theirs, uh, that they could build how they wanted, uh, align it to their values and I, do you know what? That was just so appealing to me. And, and Joe and I just thought, well, let's let's do it. Let's let's yeah, just go let's with it. Get on with it. I think. I did, and thank you for that. I think <laughs> get on with it. Exactly that. It's exactly probably that. true. I think for a lot of people, where they jump into entrepreneurship, business ownership, or whatever we call it, without actually realizing what it entails. It's that sort of enthusiasm, mm -hmm. excitement, then you sort of figure it out. So just very quickly, it's from, yeah. from you started Greenacre, and you and Joe, with a desk and a telephone, and away you go. What, what's, what, what sort of size team, and what you have, what, how's the business look now compared to that? Where is the business? Mm -hmm. from there? So, yeah, so that was 2011 when we created it. So in those seven and a half years now um we've grown organically mm -hmm. um we uh we, we've now got uh, an office in hertfordshire in birmingham and in london yeah uh we're opening up our manchester office in june which is really exciting yeah um we we've got 24 people across the business now mm -hmm. um and we, we we're now able to supply um housing professionals across you know the really the full scope of of the housing sector mm -hmm. so set up uh pods to uh, deliver finance hr um uh, it as well as our previous core business which is housing services property and assets and and, and development mm -hmm. so yeah, we've got a, a, a very wide offer yeah. Um, we, we've set Joe on a, a, a mission uh, now with our non-exec director, Alan Lewin, who uh, started about 18 months ago now. And so we've been developing our Green Acre executive model, which uh, you know, is, is in a very good place at the moment. We've, we've started to um, build some uh, relation, key relationships with very influential people in the sector. Yes. We're hosting a number of round table discussions now um, and we specifically built Greenacre to service 
operational roles. You know, that was always the game plan. You, you have to build a business on uh, your, your, your talent, your, your strengths. Um, and I, I think Greenacre Executive is now a kind of uh, evolution of the business. Mm, we, yes. we, George, Joe and I, you know, we've found, um, a, a, you know, a dynamic that works for us. We've got our roles in the business um, and we've got a really strong business behind us. You know, we've, we've got some key personnel uh, running Birmingham. We've got uh, some really uh, experienced uh, people in Hitchin. Mm -hmm. Uh, so uh, yeah, we've 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 got the kind of operations running now. So it's allowed Joe and I to step away from uh, the day to day and start building those uh, relationships at a much more senior level. Sure, sure. That's quite significant growth, you know. So, so twenty four people, uh, three stroke four offices. It's been it's been quite a journey. I would have thought. Yeah, yeah. No, it's been a it's been a really exciting journey. Exactly. And I think uh, the, the the good thing about where we are mm. you know seven and a half years down the line if you know if someone had told me when we started you know this is going to be 24 people in seven years and you know mm. three offices i'd have bit my hand off to be quite honest because it's very hard to you know that was always the vision yes that was the business plan but actually delivering that the only way you can deliver that is if you have the right people on board yes and that that's one of the most valuable lessons we've learned i think we've now we know our purpose. We know what we stand for. Mm. So it's much easier for us to identify the right people that are going to fit our values. Yeah. Um, okay. And yeah, we, 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 we have appointed a couple of people that have recruitment experience, but actually in the main, we've identified people that have the right work ethic, yes. uh, that fit our values and have the attitude and drive, not necessarily the skills because to be honest with you, recruitment is is a process, mm -hmm. but you have to be, you have to be great with people. People have to trust you, and you have to deliver a very a quality service. So if you have those component parts and you, you you're ethical in how you go about your business, and people like you and they trust you, mm -hmm. all the, the recruitment process can be taught, and that's not rocket science. It is it's simply a process. Sure. Sure. And I think, but look, I think one of the challenges for, and it's not just facing you know, recruiters, it applies to lots of business sectors. If I look at you know, Green Acre uh, and other people in the market, um, the tendency is to say, well, you know, all recruiters or all accountants or lawyers or, or coaches for that matter, you know, you're all sort of the same. Mm -hmm. What What is it? And I think I think I know what you're going to say to this, but what is it that, <laughs> that makes Green Acre special and unique? You know, why would I, why do your clients love you so much? Why have you achieved the growth? What's the secret sauce for Green Acre? The, the best way to answer that is using the feedback that we get from from our clients you know we we're really fortunate that the one thing that people generally despise about recruitment <laughs> is the unnecessary calls uh people not listening mm -hmm. and people calling in order to hit a target mm -hmm. and when you think about the process that i mentioned that you have to follow the process in recruitment in order to get work on sure by doing that and focusing purely on numbers and focusing purely on process uh you, you you end up not listening to your clients and end up frustrating them so we we do things slightly differently here um we, we focus on quality we focus on relationships and, and we genuinely focus on providing quality mm -hmm. so if, if we can't help we will always say that because the client will respect that it's not that they would never use us again. They'll just appreciate the honesty and they'll go and find someone else to deliver that campaign. Mm -hmm. So very clear on what we know. We, we're very clear on our values in the business. And it really is our people that make us different. Mm -hmm. um, and, and this is why Joe and I felt comfortable starting up a business because people bought from us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It yeah. translate that. It, it, it's a, well, it's a cliche, but we are, we're in the people business sure. and with people and you have to build that level of trust. So a long winded way of saying, but I think our recipe for success is the values that define us mm -hmm. and hiring the people that fit those values yes. and live up to day by day. Yeah.
I think, and, and Jay, I know, I mean, I know, I obviously, I know you guys, I know the team very well. I think one of my sort of observations, and this happens in, in other you know, successful businesses, but certainly for uh, Greenacre and Greenfield over here in Lux as well, is, you know, if I speak with one of the team, it doesn't matter whether in Hitchin or Birmingham, uh, it doesn't matter. You get the same response, the same feel, the same standards, same vision, same values, same personality. They've got that sort of green acre DNA, if that makes sense. And you can, you can sense it. And it's part of the, as you say, the reflection of the values. But as you say, yeah, it is, it, it's a cliche for a reason, isn't it? I think we're in the people business. Um, but yeah. Uh, yeah, so I, I, I thought you might say that to be fair, but I think you're absolutely <laughs> right as well. <laughs> um, yeah. It's, so, it's so, since since 2000, it's, 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 seven and a half coming up for sort of eight years, pretty much. You've mm. you've started the business, you've grown it, you've had wins and you know, some losses and that sort of thing, I'm sure as business goes. If you look at your mm. sort of recipe for success or tips, because people listening to this will either be in their own business, maybe recruitment or otherwise, or thinking about doing it or on their own journey. What do you know, how, how have you done it? What when you look back, anything you'd change or do different? You know, what have you found to really work for you for, for you? Um, I think what we've done, it works for us. Mm -hmm. it depends on what the the objective is for the business because if the objective is to scale an organization and 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 go for market share you're going to approach it very very differently you're going to want quicker growth you you're you're not going to be as focused on culture or um well they will they will claim that there are values absolutely and then sure. you will bring people in to fit those values. But I think the danger with scaling a business too quickly is that at some point you will lose control of that. Mm -hmm. And for me personally, and it's not just because obviously there are organizations, like huge organizations that have very strong values and culture. Sure. Um, so it's not, it's not possible, but certainly for us, for me, uh, you know, still fairly new to running a business, the way I uh, the way that works for me is that we, we do it in a measured way, mm -hmm. that we we have a, a clear trigger points for new hires, but we don't wait for that point. We we, we get ahead of the curve. Mm -hmm. The mistake we made was in the, in the first three or four years, we would only hire when there was an absolute need, and often that's too late. Right. So I, I would, my advice to anyone uh, starting a business is, A, know what your values are because when you build a business you're basically building that around your your dna mm. you're building it on your values and so the, the business that we've created i would like to think is a reflection of me as a person and how i've been brought up and and how i feel comfortable doing business mm -hmm. um, and then when you bring people into that when you're still small i mean 20 people really is still a very small business so you can control that <laughs> If you ask me this uh, in five years' time, David, I might say something very different. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think the culture will be very clear. It's you know, it is well defined now, and I think it'll even be, it'll be even stronger in five years' time. So I, I'd like to think that the values we have now will continue and follow through. Yeah, absolutely. And I think as well, I, knowing you as I do, I know the conversations you know, we've had in the past as well. And I'm pretty clear, I think, as you said, I guess we, you sort of sacrificed growth for quality, if that makes sense. Because yes. if growing a business, yes. it's quite straightforward. You chuck some money at it, get some people, and you, know, you, you pump the machine harder. But then, as you said, the quality, the values aren't sustainable. And I think something that you know, the... Mm. the the lesson, and I see this for what you guys have done and other people as well, is better to grow sustainably with high values, great people. And if that means you don't grow quite as fast, well, you know what? That that's actually okay because I think in the long yeah. run, in the long you know, the, the long game, I think you win anyway mm. in terms of value and quality to clients, that type of thing. Yeah, and and that's why I value the the link with uh, Chris and Courtney and Greenfields because they they're completely on board with with how we're how we're doing it you know sure. the first few years were frustrating i think because you know we made a few appointments it didn't quite work out for us mm -hmm. um you know we we went through a the rent reduction in the, the housing sector which hit us quite hard as well as hit our our customers very hard mm -hmm. so we've, we've had to be really adaptable as we've gone so the great thing about housing is that it's, it's varied you can develop a really meaningful career and there's so many options. And for us as a business, 
there's enough to do in housing without us getting distracted by going out of sector. Yes. <laughs> all business housing. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we've got enough to do. And, and fortunately, uh, Greenfield are, you know, on, on board with that. And they're, they're letting us, you know, do it our way. Yes, because I think with the market is, is it's a different business, isn't it? I mean, the fundamentals of values, vision and structure are the same, but you're in a different sector, different sort of disciplines around as well. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so, so it's been a, an interesting, very successful seven, seven and a half years. Um, you know, what's mm. next? Where, where do you see Greenacre in? Uh, I'm not going to ask you the classic recruiters question. Where do you see yourself in five years? <laughs> but, but you know, what does what, what does the future look like? Where, where do you reckon you'll be in the future with uh, with the business? So we, when we started, we we, we tended to work in threes. So we set three year business plans, mm -hmm. um, and. We've now got uh, a 2025 plan. Mm -hmm. um, so within the next five years, we, we're hopefully going to be, uh, well, we will be expanding the Greenacre workforce. That's likely to be across a, a further three operational offices. So mm -hmm. I would like to think that uh, by 2025, we'll have 67 offices. Mm -hmm. uh, so in order to, to, to grow geographically, that's also going to help um, the, the strategic partnerships we have with the likes of uh, the Chartered Institute of Housing yes. um, and Women in Social Housing. So we, we sponsor a number of those events um, and their reach is nationwide. And, and you know, we, we're in a position where now we have a, a, a business, we have a, a core uh, set of values and a vision. We can now expand that across the country. So our, our vision is really to become the go-to housing recruitment consultancy across the UK. Wow. Um, so we have to expand geographically. Sure. Um, we, we, we have to you know, offer career development opportunities across a, a much wider region. So, so that, that's the plan. Yes. Um, and as well as uh, expanding geographically, uh, I mentioned earlier that Joe, uh, his, his, um, his mission is to, uh, to now expand Greenacre Executive. And that's... Uh, that's, that 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 offers um, interim leadership uh, within the housing sector and uh, an executive search service. Okay. Um, so yeah, it's it's exciting times and a hell of a lot. <laughs> still, still as exciting, still as exciting. And I think one of the things as well, again, an observation, I think, is a, is a, a sort of an indicator of success when you're talking about people and values and something that for people, all business people, I guess, is I think mm. what's happening as an observation is that we've got this expansion coming through, but we are able to grow and develop the managers and the leaders from within the team because it's this career progression for people. So I know the Manchester yeah. office is going to be opened by one of the guys who wants to progress and grow and develop. And you know, having that mm -hmm. internal growth gives a lot of opportunity for people to, you know, to join the business and grow their careers within the business as well and to grow it from inside as well. Do, do you see that yeah. continuing? Is that part of, the, part of the plan? Absolutely, yeah, because I'm a firm believer that, you know, growth – should be organic really um i, I think you get a, a again a, a stronger uh, culture you get um your you know if your leaders within the business have um grown within it then you know there's a there's a hell of a lot of history mm. um it's not to say that we don't want to keep you know challenging our thinking it's not that i want to create this family feel that <laughs> is just very inward looking you know we a lot of the uh narrative that we uh, put out there in the housing sector is about you know looking outwards and the, the need to bring in new skills and challenge uh, the traditional way of thinking. So we, we're very dynamic in terms of wanting people to be themselves. We want people to challenge what Joe and I have always done because that's not it's not necessarily that's going that's got us here. Mm. That's not going to stare. Sure. So we want the young people coming through in Greenacre to really see a future. Um, and there is, there's opportunity to grow. So Gary's, for me, Gary Thomas, who uh, is very well known in the, the sector now. He is, he, he's, he's royalty now, isn't he, I'm told? He, he is to me. He started with us with no experience in recruitment. He spent 15 years in hospitality, yes. uh, which he tells everyone about, by the way. 
Um, and uh, you know, he, he's developed through the career structure. He's now uh, managing, you know, a substantial team in the business. Mm. Uh, and, and yeah, that has uh, an opportunity to continue to, to flourish. So if, if someone wants to become a team leader or a manager here, that absolutely that opportunity. Yeah. If they prefer to be a knowledge expert and, and purely build and be an expert in this part of the sector, then there's that opportunity too. So yeah, we, we don't bind people, we don't write people's future, we just let them, you know, flourish and see see where they want to take it. You know, everything's on the table. I think, I think to say with, with, with Gary, it's sort of case in point because it's not necessary to have you know, 35 years recruitment experience to be good in this business. It is to have these nice. values, ethics, standards, and approach and personality, and then you sort of adapt yourself to the recruitment um, structure. And it's, and, you know, yeah, Gary, we won't, we won't big him up too much, but he's done a fabulous job because he's got that style yeah. and personality and everybody wants to work with him. He's very, very effective. I'm sure the clients love him as much as your, uh, your, your, your attempts and the people you place as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and we've, we've got a really diverse uh, set of skills in the business now. We've got people that have come from a state agency, that uh, come from hospitality. Um, yeah, we, we've got, we, we don't just look in one or two areas. You know, we, we, yeah. as I said before, when I meet someone, I, I'm looking for personality. I'm looking yes. for honesty. Do, if I trust them and I, and I, and they build a rapport with me. Mm. Um, I know my clients well, so that that's it. It's, it's very much a uh, a personal thing. It's a it's a personality thing for us, without a doubt. Yeah, it's a great point, isn't it? Because it's it's, it's almost. So it's so simple, if you like, but it's an obvious point because it's your stroke, Joe, passion and, and, and ethics in the business. And if you don't get on with the people, they don't resonate with you. They're not going to get on with the yeah. clients, are they? So you can be sort of the acid test. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I have another uh, guy in the UK we do some work with, and his acid test is – uh, when he meets somebody, uh, one of the tests I've got to pass is, is it somebody I'd go down the pub for a pint with? You know, if they wouldn't do that, uh, in principle, yeah. then they, they're not going not gonna to work out in the business. It's not the only way you recruit people, but it's one of the little no. things. <laughs> Absolutely. I totally agree with that. So, so overall, I mean, it, it sounds like it's been a fabulous journey. And listening to you, I think maybe people listening to this, there's only three types of people I would have thought listening to this. There may be um, people in the housing sector who need your help in terms of finding great people, either from a board level or operations level. There's going to be people who want to work in recruitment and become part of the, the Greenacre team. Or there's going to be people mm. looking for a job that you can help find them a position within the housing sector. Mm. How, are those three sort of groups, how, how do they contact you? Is it contacting you? Is it through the team, through the website? What's the best way of getting in touch with, uh, with, with you? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm approachable to anyone who wants to talk to me, David. So my uh, LinkedIn, um, very easy to find on LinkedIn. Drop me a note there. Um, by all means, give me a call on the mobile. So that's all on the website as well. And we're, you know, very proactive on Twitter. So, you know, by all means, uh, Follow me and uh, send me a message, and yeah, well, let's uh, let's let's chat. There's no escape. There's no escape. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, Dan, look, I do really appreciate your time. Thank you for coming on the call. Um, the okay. your email address is on the slide, so people can see that. They can find you on the yeah. website, find you on LinkedIn. Anybody listening, if you want to contact Dan, please do. Obviously, go and make contacts. And uh, thanks for your time. And uh, we'll put this up onto. <laughs> YouTube onto the channel and for those listening join in for the next podcast we put one up every week pretty much but in the meantime Dan thank you for your time and uh, yeah. I'll speak to you real soon thanks David take care bye now bye bye